Today we're going to look at something within the uranium market that's consistently misunderstood, and that is the supply shortage and the supply gap that we talk about quite a bit. We talk about pricing, we talk about contract cycles, we talk about geopolitical tensions, but in fact, it's really the supply shortfall and that supply gap that is not just real, it's far worse than we think. So here are the four key reasons why that supply squeeze is far tighter than we've been led to believe. The first point to recognize is that the amount of uranium that's being mined around the world and has been mined for the last seven years is significantly less than the amount of uranium that goes into reactors on an annual basis. For example, in 2023, uh, there was about 190 million pounds of uranium used in uh, reactors around the world, but there was only about 140 million pounds of uranium mined. That leaves a gap of about 50 million pounds or 25%. And in the past, those shortfalls have been made up of utilities inventory, uh, excess inventory. They've been made up from government selling off stockpiles. They've been made up of, of underfeeding and downgrading. But in fact, that uh, access to the, those, those aspects of inventory have been drying up significantly over the last few years. What this means to investors is that this is not just some temporary trend. It's a systematic imbalance between mining and usage of, of uranium that is getting tighter and tighter year by year. Now, the second point to keep in mind has to do with new mines coming into production. Now, a common counter argument to, uh, to the shortage of uranium is that we have new production coming online. We have new mines being built. But in fact, uh, what that doesn't take into account are real world development issues when we look at buildings. Mines are hard to build, particularly uranium mines. You've got multi-year permitting issues. You've got huge capital costs that have to be, a cash that has to be raised, sometimes in excess of a billion dollars. You've got, uh, you've got uh, technical challenges with getting a mine off the ground. Even when we look at some of the most advanced development projects right now, those aren't expected to come online until 2027, 2028, which, which isn't going to fix our immediate problem. Meanwhile, we've got demand on the other side amping up. We've got uh, six uh, reactors currently in construction around the world. What this means to investors is that any significant supply is years away. And, uh, and the squeeze is happening now. The third point to keep in mind has to do with restarts. A lot of investors and a lot of people would believe that starting up mines that were slowed down or, or held up during the downturn in uranium, bringing them back online is going to come up with some relief. The problem with that assumption, though, is that uranium mines can't just be turned on with a flick of a switch. There's numerous things that have to, have to be undertaken before those mines can come back on. We're looking at MacArthur River, we're looking at Langer Heinrich. These are mines that were coming back online after being closed up or shut down, and they've all faced delays in coming back on. Uh, it requires restaffing. It requires repermitting in some cases. It requires uh, upgrading to newer safety codes. So there's a number of things that, that wind up requiring years before these new, uh, these old mines can be turned back on again. And even once they are on, they're not necessarily operating at full capacity right out of the gate. So what this means to investors is that these restarts are not eliminating the problem. They're just softening the blow. And in fact, as we model these things out, we, we can't be relying on them to be turned on as quickly as, as one would hope. The fourth point, and probably the most dire, is the fact that the models that we rely on in terms of projecting demand and supply are significantly inadequate. That being said, those, uh, those models are typically made from governments or the World Nuclear Association, what have you, but they operate under very specific assumptions that one has to question. These assumptions assume that all the projects that have been announced are actually going to be built. It, uh, they assume that they are all going to be financed on time. They all assume that they're going to be permitted on time. What we know is that the real world doesn't work that way. Mines are delayed. Things are held up. Operational issues arise. And, and these mines just do not come into production at a pace that one believes just by reading, reading these reports. What this means to investors is that these reports are providing us with a false sense of security. Uh, these companies have to secure contracts, they have to secure pounds in the ground, they have to secure funding before they're actually going to come into play and uh, start to uh, accrue the value uh, that we expect to see out of it. So here's the big picture. When it comes to supply and the supply gap and the size of that gap, we have to recognize that production has been falling short of consumption for quite some time now. We have to understand that new mines are not going to be brought into production at a pace that we would hope they would. We would have to recognize that the restarts are not occurring at a rate that one would expect them to. And most importantly, the models and projections that we're relying on are all built on somewhat shaky assumptions. So as a result, we are looking at a true structural tightening uh, in this market 
that is going to affect the underlying price of uranium and the markets on a go-forward basis in a fairly drastic way. If you enjoy this video and you want to see more, please join us for a few more.